know that this could be one of your jobs. You must. Like, yeah. You know, something you have to do. It's definitely in the job description. Yeah. I think I'd have a cow if I saw that. Hey! <laughs> it keeps going up. So, and on I wonder on that note, like in Florida, Jen, does that mean if you're a police officer, you have to like alligator be okay with wrangling, the alligator alligators? Wrangling? We see it job? all the time, yeah. Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. We'll have to like dissect which animal, which state is the you know <laughs> yeah. the one that's, that's like yeah. your nemesis. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you guys carry on with that today. If you have some free time, you can think about that one. <laughs> we will keep it going on America's Morning Headquarters. And here's a look at what's happening. We are here with you through the mid morning hours to get you ready for all the big events in your life. That's right. The Weather Channel has you covered from coast to coast, and when we're looking at the wild difference between weather in the east versus the west. It is really going to be a tale of two halves here for us. Yeah, we're set up over the country over the next few days and even beyond. Very cold and snowy in the west mm -hmm. and very warm at least temporarily in the south. Very beautiful yes. in the east. You got a lot of good weather out there, but we do have some tough weather to get through. We're going to take you through that with today's big deal. The scary swings that we're seeing out there are big concerns that comes out of this whole storminess pattern that we have set up here. And that includes parts of Oklahoma, northern Texas, Oklahoma City, down to Wichita Falls. Uh, right here, there's a couple areas along I-35, I-44, which are under flood watches. And it's for a couple of inches of rainfall. Starting today, you can see it raining right now, but then continuing over the next two days. So rain right now is pretty steady out there on this whole stretch of I-44, I-35, north of Ardmore anyway, up through Oklahoma. Oklahoma City and some of the heavier stuff is about to lift over I-40. It's already a wet ride. It's about to get worse with some of the bigger rainfall rates coming in. Temps are hanging out in the 60s here, upper 60s across this area, upper 60s around Wichita Falls as well. It's still warm in Texas. We're starting the day at 73 in Dallas. Again, this front coming in here is not going to make its way through yet, but it will eventually this week really bringing some big temperature changes. We also have some lightning and thunder across Arizona and New Mexico this morning and some of that lifting up here from Mexico. We're going to see a little bit more yet to come, maybe even in Tucson, the chance for some thunderstorms coming in for you. Now, here's a look at where we could see severe weather today. The risk of storms, again, lightning will be one of the risks that's most prolific, and you saw that already today. So that will be a risk. The chance for maybe some hail or gusty winds of the I-10 corridor, Fort Stockton, I-20 heading through Midland, and even up through the Panhandle around Lubbock. We've got that chance of thunderstorms today. And then tomorrow, we're going to move it just a little bit further to the east with that chance of storms going severe and again it's a chance it's not a, certainly a guarantee but just the very fact that we could see lightning out here is a risk and that will affect some of your outdoor plans so you know part of this is the moisture that's lifted in and getting combined with uh, you know, from Norma from Mexico combined with our system here to the middle of the country so we're gonna see I think some bigger rainfall coming on in over the next two days which is why those flood watches are up in Oklahoma you see what happens from San Angelo to Wichita Falls by tomorrow a bigger batch of rain coming on in Oklahoma City Wichita Falls that zone now we're back into it for the second half of tomorrow right through the evening and then it is finally starting to move east coming through Dallas by early Thursday morning or overnight Wednesday into Thursday we'll have rain possible thunderstorms got to watch out for that risk for severe weather you know just looking at uh, the instability that we've got being forced out there so it's a chance but the rainfall is going to be one of our most widespread risks that it could be too heavy could cause some flooding or flash flooding I know this is an area that needs rainfall but even so with the amount of rain that we could get in a short period of time it could cause some issues here Alex so watch that and also points northbound to uh, now we actually still have some fog around the New Orleans area. Uh, our virtual view kind of shows what that is like out there right now. You know, and certainly been watching some of the uh, the tower cams across the area while this vantage point is looking a little bit better around like Pontchartrain. But let's go back to yesterday and we had some light winds, which is what allowed for the fog to develop, but we had a very light either east, southeast or southeast wind. So we had this fog developing over here right along in its classic area where this is an elevated portion of I-55. Um, the air was very saturated, dew point close to the temperature. And then this marsh fire ongoing, that was the smoke was just infected in with these light winds and it combined with the fog to give us this super fog condition, which is visibility that is less than 10 feet. I mean, in some cases, it's zero nearly zero. I mean, you can't even see that at some of the, the spots where we have uh, reporting stations at, but the Lakefront Airport at one point did report zero, Reserve at one point did report zero. So again, it's very difficult conditions when it comes to driving. When you get the smoke and fog mixed together, you can't see, you kind of lose a uh, sense of what's where in terms of your speed. And you know, if you don't have that car in front of you, you won't be able to see in enough time for stopping to have enough stopping distance. So visibility definitely gets reduced quite significantly in a case 
place like this. Uh, we know that fog is dangerous. There's more than 25,000 crashes every year due to fog, and that leads to more than 8,900 injuries and 464 deaths. Fog itself is dangerous. When you get these super fog conditions, it's much, much worse, actually. We've seen super fog before. Uh, it's, it happened mostly in Florida. We've seen it on I-95. I remember it was a, about two years ago, I-95 in Southeast Florida. It's happened on I-75 before in Gainesville back in 2012. So in this case, I-55 actually still remains closed at I-10. They are closure due to an accident before Manchac and motorists need to use an alternate route. I just checked the traffic conditions before I came up here. And again, that's still an area that you cannot, cannot uh, drive through. And we are still dealing with some fog this morning. There's a dense fog advisory in place. You know, we still have the light winds, all the weather factors that go into play in creating foggy conditions like we see so often in the fall. They're in place this morning and we do have some areas of lower visibility, like again, some of those spots at reserve, a half mile visibility right now. And when you think about the foggy places, uh, the Gulf Coast is one of them. Another spot, especially this time of year uh, where we get a lot of fog is in the Mountain Valley areas in the Appalachians in the Northeast as well. When you get that cold air drainage and that can allow that fog to form and pool in some of those areas uh, sort of sitting down at the base of mountains. So be careful driving, especially this time of year. And, you know, just knowing that fog is a potential issue out there. Great. All right. Well, do uh, you guys remember that buoy that uh, we've been talking a lot about? Absolutely. You know, with all the hurricane comments and coming, you can vote in our poll. It's beginning to enjoying or love the warmer times. We've got a bit of that here in the coming days. In fact, when you look at the population numbers that'll be experiencing temperatures that'll be well above average out there for you. There's going to be quite a few climbing up to over 200 million by the time we get into tomorrow and we'll stay there for Thursday as well. You've got to admit being above average in the end of October is a pretty good place to be. Yes, Most depending places. how much above average. Yeah. But even, I mean, even if it's 20 or 30 degrees above average, you're not sweating it out. And that tell the folks in Jackson, Mississippi. <laughs> well, that is true. <laughs> that is true. Some of us are still sweating it out. I mean, we'll watch how things continue to warm up here for you in the southeast as we get through the next couple of days. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's talk about this. These are the areas that will be above average for today. I mean, 10 to 20 above. Some of the, the core of being above average will be here across portions of the uh, upper Midwest there, parts of Iowa into Wisconsin. Very, very warm, at least compared to average. But we look at the actual temperatures. You head farther south, and that's where, Jen, we may be sweating it out. All right, so 88, I'll admit, it's pretty warm. <laughs> um, and you've got that, and, uh, probably the warmest spot is uh, Jackson, Little Rock mm -hmm. here. No one's hitting 90 officially, but will there be a 90? I bet. It's certainly out of the question. Yeah. I would not be surprised if we do see that. So what's going on? Well, Big Ridge, that's actually going to be expanding here for you, north and eastbound in the coming days. So a lot of these areas here in the east, while the west cools down, sees the snow, it's going to be warm and balmy here in the eastern half of the country. And so we keep it going into Thursday all the way up through New England. Temperatures are running 10 to 20 degrees above average. We're not talking 90 up there, but it is going to be well above average. Look at the 74 in New York. Yeah, absolutely. Now, 74 with sunshine. That's a great day. I won't, I, mean? I won't lie. <laughs> Farther to the south, you can see these numbers again a bit on the warmer side. But when we start talking about that sort of last 80 degree day, uh, at least on average, I mean, some of these cities, you talk about Dallas, New Orleans. I mean, you can go well into the season and getting to 80. But for Nashville and Atlanta, I mean, typically by now, we'd be looking at, our, on average, our latest 80-degree day. Yeah, so. Yeah. Warm we'll times, see. October, it's, a, it's a one of those months. All right, Dr. Postel, you're talking uh, about what's going on, I believe, in the tropics. Thank Always you. now, once you start getting to two, three, four storms yeah. down, the, down the road. Yeah, but for now, exciting. Last thunderstorms of the season? Probably uh, not. Go with a no yeah, on that. Probably not. But we are seeing some this morning here. Green Bay to Milwaukee and points in between. Thunderstorms on the move. Yeah, they are. So downpours this morning and heads up because there could be some strong, strong storms through the day here for parts of Minnesota into Wisconsin. Damaging wind gusts and hail. Those are going to be the primary risk that we could face. We saw a little hail in Wisconsin yesterday, so mm -hmm. wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit more. Now, today, watching for Minneapolis, Point South, Rochester in Minnesota, we get into thunderstorms by later on today. Then you'll notice as we head through Wednesday, we kind of push things a bit farther to the east. We get a break, but then very quickly, as we get into third, basically Wednesday night and Thursday morning, another round of rain showers and thunderstorms that develops and pushes through. And this is the, the just the more dynamic portion of the storminess we got going on because you can see the snow on the back edge, storms ahead of it. So, you know, this is a true classic dynamic extra tropical low sister system. There you system. go. We'll see things drying out from west to east as we head through the day on Friday. Look at the area, though, because the drought 
it has taken over this area. So we need some of this rain and we should get some help. This is not going to bust the drop by any means, but we'll take what we get. It could be a decent soaking. Two to three inches of rain is a possibility from Minnesota into Wisconsin, and that will come in two rounds. So at least you won't get it all at once either. Yes, that's very key. If you can kind of spread it out a bit, that really does help things out. Farther south, how about some rain showing up here? In fact, you got central Oklahoma soggy right now. Oklahoma City sitting in the upper 60s with some rain. Even in the southwest, we're seeing mm -hmm. some showers. There may be a few storms going severe today. Lightning, always a risk, but there could be some hail or some gusty winds coming out of these storms too from New Mexico into West Texas. Yeah, so soggy weather will continue along that 35 corridor and fulfilling it a bit more even as we get to our Wednesday morning. So we're in this for some time. It's going to get a chance to add up. Again, good news here. We need it because it's been a very, very dry too. Bowie 41048, which we're keeping a close <laughs> eye on. Yeah, the famous 41048 buoy there right now. It's going to track very close to that buoy. So, yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. But you <laughs> so we have a little obsession with this buoy. I would say we were fixated. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> but you know what? As Hurricane Lee sent waves crashing over beaches, it also washed over one of the many buoys that sends back information. And that buoy was indeed knocked out of commission uh, as Philippe, excuse me, as Hurricane Lee rolled on by. I remember tweeting about this. Yeah. And the last observation that I saw... We 41048, so we right. want to get an answer to our burning question about what happened to the buoy. <laughs> With us today is Dr. <laughs> so how common is it for a, a buoy to kind of meet a similar fate? Well, the team here... You make a great point. I mean, this year has been like the year of the recurving mm -hmm. tropical cyclones, and so they've taken a beating from them. But, you know, you mentioned that they've been through all of that. How old are a lot of them, and how often are they new ones deployed, and are they replaced? It's been busy. Now, we know that there's an array of buoys in the Pacific, which is critical in detecting El Nino and La Nina conditions. So what's being measured there? Is it, is it different than other buoys that we see in the Gulf of Alaska, for example? Talk about the buoy data and what they bring in. How different is that from what uh, we get from maybe sort of the salindromes? Well, the sail drones, we, we actually have employed a sail drone in the West Coast. These buoys, they're, they are so critical. Mm, yeah. Thank you so much for all the work yes. you guys do, seriously, yeah. and appreciate you coming on today to, uh, to talk more about what's happening at the National Data Buoy Center. That was Dr. William Burnett, director there at the National Data Buoy Center. I just want to say one thing. We, we saw that picture of the Bermuda Triangle on there. <laughs> That's for fun. Yes. Right? yes. The buoy, thankfully, is located outside of it, <laughs> but the Bermuda Triangle had nothing to do Zero. with the loss of the data from this buoy. So you think. Mm. <laughs> They're in the coming days. Uh, so we're going to kind of talk a little bit about that. And Why not? Offer up some fun facts about these cities as well. How about we start off with, with Jackson? Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Mississippi to be exact, which yes. is actually one of four, only four cities oh. in the world that hosts this two-week international ballet competition. Can you imagine Jackson, Mississippi? It's not what I expected. Four. You wouldn't. Who knew? Now, you may be wondering what are the other four yeah, or other three I'm, cities. I'm curious. You've got Varna, which is in Bulgaria, mm -hmm. Moscow, Russia. And nice. Tokyo, Very Japan. Nice. Wow, and Jackson, Mississippi. And Jackson, fits Mississippi. Right into that. That's interesting. <laughs> Who would have thunk it? Well, also in Jackson, Mississippi, uh, it happened in 1963. Mm -hmm. The first human lung transplant took place at the University of Mississippi Medical Center in Jackson. What a history. Yeah. yeah. Holy cow. Wow. history, yeah. Wow. Look well, at that Jackson, forecast. Look at that forecast. It's going to be hot. This so, is summer heat. Yes, 90 degrees. And there is, there's a reason why we picked these two Jacksons. Because the weather... Say, I'm going to fly to Jackson, and then all of a sudden you're packed for this Jackson, and you end oh. up with the other Jackson. <laughs> right. It happens all know the time. Know your Jacksons. Yeah. Yeah. Know your Jackson. I love it. Wait, is it Jackson or Jackson Hole for this, Wyoming? This was a question. I was like, wait a minute. Because we always say Jackson Hole. Yeah. yeah. But there's two different things. Well, wait, it's both. So which is it? Well, that's it. It's two <laughs> different things. The answer is, well, Jackson, <laughs> so Jackson, 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 just <laughs> refers to the town of Jackson, which is actually the southern end of the Jackson Hole Valley. Jackson Hole, that refers to the entire valley, which is approximately 60 miles long. So they're two separate things. So in the Venn diagram of this Jackson, mm. it Jackson fits inside Jackson Hole. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this reminds me of my uh, infatuation with Macon. Like in finding all the Macons around the country. Right, right, right? Right. There's multiple Jacksons. In fact, there's quite a few of them. Well, we learned a lot about Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah. What about Jackson, Wyoming? Well, actually home to the world's longest running western wow. shootouts. 
This thing began in 1957 and actually it can be seen every day, Monday through Saturday, in the town square. Which is, I mean, how wild is that? Every day there's a shootout. That's crazy. Um, all right, well. Probably don't want to shoot out on Thursday because it's going to be a snowy time out there. Look at that forecast. Mm. Not just the snow, but how about that low temperature? Mm. Ooh, Ten. yeah, I just noticed. Saturday morning, Sunday morning. Eight. Eight. Yeah. Oh, boy. So, so which 90, Jackson do you? <laughs> yeah, I want the 90 Jackson. Maybe, Alex, you'll take the 8 Jackson. I'll take the, oh, that's that's cold. I'm that's packing cold. my ballet slippers and going to, going to Jackson. To Jackson. Go. Well, we're all going to Jackson. All right, sounds good. Well, let's go back to our question of the day. We got a rabbit hole here. There is, sir. Brianna, I can never remember the difference. It's like the way they can poke their heads out and, and right? I don't know. You guys, we, we got the weather for you. We're here with you through the mid-morning hours with your weather to get you ready for your big events in your life. That's right. The Weather Channel has you covered from coast to coast. And I tell you, when we're looking at the, the wild difference uh, between weather here in the east versus the west, it is going to be very wild indeed. Now, right in the heartland, you can see it's going to be wet. Wet and stormy. But look what shows up. How about some snow? Significant, not just mountain snow. Not just mountain snow, that, that rain in the middle of the country, that's the dividing line. That's the mm -hmm. front between the warm air mm -hmm. in the east and the Arctic air in the northern plains in the west. This is our first Arctic outbreak, you can call it, of the season. Now, it's not as cold as in January and February, but sure. still way below average. Oh, it's yeah. pretty cold. It's cold, <laughs> cold. Uh, Meanwhile, in the east, we've got a sprawling high pressure. You see the absence of... of of anything. We have any rain, no snow in the east for yeah. a few days thanks to this big sprawling high pressure because this is slow to move east. So we get to enjoy some sunshine for a while there. Yeah, wow. All right. Well, today's big deal the scary swing.